Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're taking a trip to Wall Street. Ooh, Wall Street. Yeah, but instead of, you know, the usual suits and ties, right. we're bringing along something a bit more high-tech, uh, machine learning. Okay. Now, before you run for the hills thinking this is all, you know, algorithms and equations and, <laughs> you know. It's going to be way over my head. Don't worry. We're going to decode it all. Okay. And trust me, it's way more interesting than it sounds. It is. We're going to break down a research paper. Okay. Titled, Interpretable Supervised Portfolios. H-E. Yeah. Published back in September 2022 by Guillaume Chevalier, Guillaume Coqueret, and Thomas Raffineau. Mm. It tackles a big problem in the world of finance. Mm. The problem of black box algorithms. Okay, so you're saying financial institutions are using machine learning to manage money. Mm -hmm. But it's all happening in this mysterious black box. Yeah. It's like, that sounds a little risky, doesn't it? It can be. Imagine handing over your hard-earned cash to a system. Yeah. And nobody can really explain how it works. Right. Not even the experts who built it. Yeah. That's a tough sell. It is. It all comes down to trust. I think you're right. Like, think about it. Would you rather trust a person or a machine you don't understand with your savings? Definitely a person. Yeah. There's got to be a way to have like the power of these complex algorithms right without the mystery right exactly that's where interpretable machine learning enters the picture okay and that's what this research paper dives into mm -hmm. the authors basically created a way to like crack open that black box and translate the machine's decision making process into something we humans can understand so it's like giving the algorithm a translator i'm intrigued tell me more We'll meet the star of our show, Rulefit. Rulefit? Yeah, think of it like a detective that sifts through all the data, yeah. finds the key clues, and presents its findings in a way even your grandma could understand. Okay, I love that. Right. No more needing a PhD in computer science to understand my investments. Exactly. So how does Rulefit actually work? Let's say we're trying to figure out Okay. what makes some houses more expensive than others. Right, so rule fit starts with something called decision trees. Okay. Picture them as a series of questions. Okay. With yes or no answers that lead you to a prediction. Gotcha. From these trees, rule fit extracts simple rules. Okay. Things like houses near the water are usually pricier, or yeah. bigger houses in safe neighborhoods cost more. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's like taking the best parts of those decision trees and turning them into like easy to follow guidelines. Exactly. But it's not just about individual factors. Okay. Rule fit also looks for interactions between them. It's like saying, hey, this house is near the water and it has a huge backyard that's a winning combo. Yeah. It combines those rules with the original data. Okay. And uses a method called adaptive lasso mm. to figure out. Oh, that sounds fancy. Oh, yeah. Well, it is, it's a very cool method for figuring out. Yeah which rules and features are most important Got it. for making accurate predictions. So it's like rule fit is a super smart detective right. who can not only identify the clues, mm -hmm. but also understand how they all fit together. <laughs> now the million dollar question is, can it actually build a portfolio that makes money? That's what the researchers wanted to find out. They tested rule fit by building portfolios yeah, okay. using three different challenges. Okay. 10 US industry portfolios like tech or health care, mm. 25 portfolios based on company size, and something called the book to market ratio. Hold on, book to market ratio. I'm drawing a blank here. Uh, yeah. What exactly is that? It's essentially a way to compare a company's market value okay. to its book value, which is basically the value of its assets minus its liabilities. I see. It's a way to get a sense of whether a company is overvalued or undervalued by the market. I uh, got it. So it's like figuring out if a house is a steal or a ripoff. Yeah. Based on how much it's actually worth. Right. Versus how much people are willing to pay. Exactly. Okay, so back to the challenges. Yeah. What was the third one? The final test was using four broad asset classes, global stocks and bonds. Okay. It was the ultimate test to see if rule fit could handle different types of investments. So they really put it through the ringer. They did. And the and the, drum roll, please. Rule fit actually performed just as well as those mysterious black box methods mm. when it came to risk adjusted returns. Wow. Yeah. This is big news. Okay. It means you don't have to sacrifice performance for transparency. Now we're talking. Yeah. So not only can we understand what rule fit is doing. Right. But it can actually hold its own against the big boys. I'm impressed. Right. 
And here's where things get even more exciting. The researchers didn't just stop at building portfolios. Okay. They wanted to see if Rule Fit could uncover why certain investments do well. Okay, so it's not just about making money. It's about understanding the secret sauce. This is where it gets really juicy. You got it. They used a massive data set of U.S. stocks okay. from 1984 to 2020. Okay. And get this, they looked at 89 different characteristics for each stock. 89. 89. Wow. That's like trying to solve a financial puzzle with 89 pieces. It is. And remember, Rule Fit doesn't just look at these characteristics in isolation. Right. It also looks at the interactions between them. Okay. This means that a particular combination of factors yeah. might be a stronger predictor of performance right. than any single factor on its own. So it's not just that a company is big. Right. But it's big and it's in a growing industry and it has a history of innovation. Exactly. It's about seeing the whole picture. It is. And what's fascinating is that they found some surprising insights. Like what? For instance, sin stocks. Sin stocks? Yeah. Things like tobacco or gambling companies okay. often performed well. Hold on, are you saying these are good investments? Not at all. It's crucial to remember that this is just an observation from the data. Okay. Rule fit is simply identifying patterns, okay. not making moral judgments. Good point. Yeah. Okay, so what other aha moments did this research uncover? Wow. What's the secret to building a winning portfolio? It turns out it's more complicated than just picking a few magic characteristics. Okay. Rule Fit found that you need to consider a decent number of characteristics around 30. 30? Yeah, to account for 75% of the model's importance. So much for simplicity. Right. It challenges the idea that a super simple model will do the trick. Yeah. And here's another key finding. Okay. The importance of different characteristics actually changes over time. Uh, so what worked in the 80s might not work so well today. It makes sense the markets are constantly evolving. Exactly. What was once a hot investment right. can quickly become outdated. Yeah. Just like fashion trends. Oh yeah, for sure. You know? Okay, this is all super interesting, but can you give me like a concrete example of how these characteristics and rules yeah. might play out in the real world? Absolutely. Let's take a look at table six from the paper. One of the key characteristics highlighted is something called Devo. Devo. Yeah, short for dividend omission. Dividend omission. Yeah, Rule Fit found that this played a significant role okay. in recommending portfolio weights. Meaning that whether a company pays dividends or not uh -huh. is a major factor in deciding how much to invest. Exactly. And think about it. Companies that consistently pay dividends yeah. are often seen as more financially stable, right. which can make them attractive to investors. So it's like Rule Fit is giving us a peek behind the curtain Yeah. of what drives investment decisions. Pretty cool stuff. It is. It's really fascinating stuff. Yeah. This interpretability is really powerful. Yeah, I'm really glad we're diving into this. Because yeah. I think it's, you know, a really important topic. Yeah, and one that has a lot of potential to really change. Yeah. the way we think about investing. For yeah, it really does highlight how those seemingly small details like whether a company pays dividends can actually have a big impact. And Rule Fit helps us connect those dots. This is blowing my mind. Before diving into all of this, I kind of had this naive idea that these fancy algorithms could just, you know, spit out a magic formula for picking stocks some secret code to unlock riches beyond my wildest dreams. It's a tempting thought, isn't it? But as this research shows, the markets are way more complex than that. It's not about finding a single magic bullet, but rather understanding a whole range of factors and how they interact with each other and how those relationships can shift over time. Right, because like you said, what worked in the 80s might not work today. It's like fashion trends, shoulder pads were all the rage back then. Mm -hmm. But try wearing those on Wall Street today and you'd probably get some strange looks. Exactly. And we can actually see this in figure three from the paper. It shows how the importance of even those top performing characteristics fluctuates across different time periods. For example, Devo, that dividend emission characteristic we were talking about, was a big deal in certain years, but less so in others. So even with this sophisticated model, it's not like you can just set it and forget it. You need to constantly adapt and reassess 
just like a savvy investor would. Absolutely. Markets are dynamic, yeah. and any successful strategy needs to be able to keep up with those changes. Okay. I'm starting to see what makes this research so groundbreaking. It's not just about building a better investment model. It's about building a model that we can actually understand and learn from. It's like having a financial mentor that shows you their thought process, not just their final decision. I couldn't agree more. That interpretability is key. By shining a light on the decision-making process, we can gain a deeper understanding in how markets work, what factors really drive performance, and ultimately make more informed choices. It's about empowering investors, not replacing them. So let's talk about the practical side of things. How could this technology actually be used in the real world? What kind of impact could this have on, say, financial advisors and your clients? The possibilities are pretty exciting. Imagine a financial advisor sitting down with a client and being able to clearly explain why they're recommending certain investments. Using those simple rules that RuleFit uncovers, it could build a whole new level of trust and transparency in a field that can sometimes feel like a black box itself. Right, no more vague explanations or just relying on blind faith. Instead, you've got concrete evidence and a clear understanding of the why behind the recommendations. Exactly. And this technology could be a game changer for individual investors as well. It could give them the tools to make more informed decisions about their own portfolios, rather than relying solely on the advice of others. It's like giving everyone access to a financial GPS that not only tells you where to go, but also explains the route and why it's the best path for you. That's a great analogy. And remember, this research specifically focused on building portfolios. But think about all the other areas of finance where interpretable machine learning could be applied from risk management to fraud detection, loan approvals, and even things like insurance pricing, the potential is enormous. Wow, it really feels like we're on the verge of a revolution in how we interact with the financial world. We are, and as with any revolution, there will be challenges and questions to address. But this research is a powerful reminder that we don't have to sacrifice understanding for innovation, we can have both. And that's an incredibly exciting prospect. This deep dive has been absolutely fascinating. It feels like I've learned so much about how machine learning is reshaping the financial landscape. I'm glad to hear that. It's definitely a complex topic, but hopefully we've managed to shed some light on it and spark some curiosity in our listeners. You definitely have. So to all our listeners out there, if you're eager to learn more about this research, we'll be sure to include a link to the original paper in the show notes. And we'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode. Join the conversation on our social media channels. We're always eager to hear your perspectives. It's been a pleasure exploring this with you. Until next time, keep those minds curious and stay tuned for more deep dives into the fascinating world of knowledge. And remember, even in the world of high finance, it's not magic, it's understanding. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Yeah, it's incredible to think that we're moving from a world of like financial secrets and intuition to one where we can actually see the logic yeah. behind the decisions, even when those decisions are made by machines. It's like we've been handed a powerful new lens to examine the financial world. And the more we understand how things work, the better equipped we are to navigate it, whether we're seasoned investors or just starting out. Right. It's not about replacing human expertise, but rather augmenting it. Like you said, there will always be challenges and questions to grapple with. But this research feels like a huge step in the right direction. I agree. And it's important to remember that this is just the beginning. The field of interpretable machine learning is constantly evolving, and we're only just scratching the surface of what's possible. So what's next? Where do you see this technology heading in the future? What are you most excited about? One area I'm particularly excited about is using this technology not just to understand past data, but to make predictions about the future. Imagine if we could use RuleFit to not only identify which stocks have performed well historically, but also to anticipate which ones are likely to outperform in the years to come. That's mind-blowing. It would be like having a crystal ball for the stock market. Right. But with that kind of power comes a lot of responsibility, right? We need to be careful about how we use these tools. Absolutely. As these technologies become more sophisticated, it's crucial to ensure they're used ethically and responsibly. We need to be mindful of potential biases in the data to safeguard against unintended consequences and to make sure that these tools are accessible to everyone, not just a select few. It's like we're entering a new era of financial exploration and we need to chart this course carefully, making sure we're using this incredible power for good. Well said. 
And it's a journey that requires all of us to participate, researchers, policymakers, investors, and the public alike. The more we understand these technologies, the better equipped we'll be to shape their development and ensure they serve us all. This has been an incredible deep dive. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise and insights with us today. I feel like I've gained a whole new understanding of how machine learning is shaping the future of finance. It's been a pleasure. It's exciting to see how this research is sparking curiosity and opening up new possibilities. And I'm confident that together we can harness these powerful tools to create a more transparent, equitable, and prosperous financial future. To all our listeners, we hope this deep dive has inspired you to explore the world of interpretable machine learning and its impact on finance. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the research paper and other resources. And as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Join the conversation on our social media channels. Until next time, keep those minds curious and never stop exploring.